that's the sink. Cool. All right. I mean, we can just hop in then. Yeah. Awesome. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Real Talk with Bernard. I don't know that I need to do that at this point. Like, if you're watching it, you know what you clicked on. We're listening. And if you're listening, oh. you know what you clicked on as well. I would think so. So, I don't know why I have to say the... Targeted Welcome ads. Back. You're not, are you not targeting people with this? And they're like, what is this? And, and then they'll be like, oh, welcome back to Real Talk. No, because like you just know that. Like when you click on it, I know I'm going to Real Talk. Assuming people know how to read. Yeah, exactly. So I don't have to say what it is. I can say welcome back, but I'm not going to say anything. Anyways, <clears throat> I'm here with a very special human being today. Uh, I'm here with Joshua Jacob Mason, a good friend of mine. Uh, he is a fellow uh, member of ministry um, yep. and also just a very well-rounded human being. Oh. Yeah, like I'm, I'm very... I fooled you well. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I believe that. No, um, I'm just kidding. You're amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, yeah, I'm very excited Me too. to be talking to you Me too. Uh, about... What are we talking about? I forget what we settled on. I don't want to say it now in case you decide to change your mind. Crap. Oh, I said church hurt. I church forgot. hurt. Yeah. So I don't know. For those who might not know what that is, um, it's just a nice way of saying, like a little fun way of saying. Like, <laughs> a little fun way to say <laughs> some people get really emotionally yes, and damaged. mentally damaged. Yep. By religious institutions. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, like I was saying, like prior to us starting, I like I went to a Catholic college. Um, did you have to, sorry, no, no, you, did you have to, I always ask this when somebody says they went to a Catholic college, did you have to have certain religion classes or did you have yes. to go to chapel and things like that? I didn't have to go to chapel. Okay. So they had mass every like couple of days or whatever. Um, and so that was an option, but it was not mandatory. What was mandatory was, yeah, you do have to take a few theology classes. And what was that like? Uh, I thought it was actually really awesome. Um, and just where I was at, at that point, um, I mean, cause I did film. Sure. Uh, and so, but also have a background in church. And so being able to have those classes was cool, especially um, from like, they're obviously taught from a Catholic perspective right. versus Protestant, which is what I was raised in. And yeah, so you get to learn a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And, and it really, I mean, uh, something just clicked. That's a weird popping sound. Yeah. Pop. Pop, pop, popsicle. Ice, ice, icicle. Test, test. Testing, testing one, one, two, two three. three. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, oh, man. I knew this would be a good time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, it was really cool. And just a lot of things that I thought about the Catholic Church, just growing up, just whatever. I, I was wrong about a lot of things. Yeah, and I yeah. had my mind changed about a lot of things. Cool. Um, but also just... Some things were reinforced. Um, and one of those things, like, I had so many of my friends uh, who were just not religious people, uh, a lot, so many of them had a background in the Catholic Church. Yeah. And so many of them yeah. are just, like, have nothing, nothing good to say about it. Yeah, that's a shame. Actually, that's a perfect, I don't know if you intended that to be as perfect of a segue into church hurt as, because that's, that's actually a side of church hurt that I don't think about, because, like, you mm. I've only experience the protestant tradition right yeah and so but yet i'm in buffalo new york yeah which is deeply catholic uh, has been for forever uh, and so i would say you know almost anybody who has come into our church has at one time experienced catholic faith you know whether they grew it grew up in it whether they went to a catholic high school or whatnot and so and i've heard some stories mm. i mean you know y yeah I don't know if you, you've you heard about like nuns and rulers and things yeah. like that. And I always thought that was like a joke, like a motif in yeah. movies and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I always thought it was just a joke. Uh, and then, no, literally, I've, I have I know countless people at this point who have had their knuckles bruised yeah. by a ruler. I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Like, you talk about deep conditioning. Yeah. Some of my friends, just even now so removed from the church they still there's th that the, it was it was a catholic guilt that they call it that is just ingrained in them yeah. where like there's just something about it being a sunday morning or whatever or it's like 
Yeah. Maybe I should be in mass or. Yeah, I mean, I still think that that that's all Christian. We call it Christian guilt in our church. Hmm. I have a uh, board member who who always talks about you know when I'm feeling down about something or I should be doing more and I should be doing. And he's like, dude, that's just Christian guilt, man. Hmm. And guilt comes, you know, my pastor always says guilt, you know, guilt comes from Satan, right? Hmm. You know, Jesus has set us free. We were supposed to be living in freedom, not guilt and shame, right? Right. Whoa, that's air conditioning. They fixed it just in time for this to beautiful to get hot. To yeah. get, oh, it feels super good. <laughs> Finally, wow. Yeah. But yeah, sorry. Uh, no, yeah. Um, where was I going with that? So you were at college, Catholic. Yeah, uh, and it was a good experience for you. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, sure. Um, so, I mean, they, I said it was cool. Like I came on strong earlier. Yeah. Uh, there was one class that I really, really liked, and there's one professor who it was for it was a history course, but he was very, very Catholic, and so okay. um, it kind of just bled into everything he taught, and that was cool. But there was another theology course, which is still the worst, I think, educational course I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Why? The dude was literally in his nineties. Oh, uh, it was just one of those where he was like, "I'm not gonna stop till I drop," and. Just my life motto, yeah, and just well, don't be like him, please. <laughs> like, was it just endless PowerPoint slides? No, it was just endless him Lecture, just talking, yeah. and, wow. and so much of it just didn't make sense. I'm like, sorry. we'd have these weird debates. No, that's all I've good. Ex- I, 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 can, I can totally experience like I can feel mm. that experience, and it's never good, yeah. Oh man, yeah. that was rough. I did not do well, but I passed. <laughs> I mean, it was an, it was my only it was the only eight a.m. that I had in school. Too. Oh, that's even more brutal. Yeah, I had no idea how much that would kick my. Patina. Oh yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. I made the mistake of my my only like eight a.m. class. I think my entire time I was in school was uh, a gym class because I had to take a gym credit or a fitness credit. Right. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. I was married at that point <laughs> with a child, and I was like, dude, if. If I haven't figured out my life yet, <laughs> like fitness wise, it's not gonna it's happen. Not gonna and happen. you're not gonna convince me. Facts. But I did it. Yeah. Uh, anyway. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, next week we'll be talking about school hurt. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. That yeah. Um so yeah, I mean this idea of church hurt and just people really I I mean I I, I think from what I've examined in, in the culture, so much of what society deems as progressive now or whatever, um, so much of it seems to be a form of correction. At least this is what I've observed. It, it, it's a form of correction for just a lot of the... Overcorrection, right? Yes. Would you say? Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Overcorrection for just the terrible things that people in the church have done. Yeah. Throughout the years, specifically the last like hundred years, um, not that that was like worse than the Crusades or anything, right, but yeah. just because like with the advancement of technology and everything like that, it's just you know it's just natural that now we're able to reflect a lot clearer than before. And yeah, I just think so much of it is overcorrection to the point where we're not even questioning some things. Yep. I would agree. Yeah. And well, that's what, yeah, no, that's yeah. a good word. Yeah. I, uh, it's, it's interesting because along part of the church hurt, I think that happened or happens is that you don't feel like you're allowed to question things. Right. Mm. You know, whether it's Catholic or Protestant, it doesn't matter. The, the, you know, main people that I'm closest to are people who are either coming out of a Catholic tradition and coming into a Protestant tradition. So they're carrying certain baggage, mm. you know, um, you know, seeing people flinch when communion Sunday happens, yeah. you know, and have it, having to have really deep conversations about that. Or, uh, you know, people my age, millennials, if you will, uh, who they grew up in the church and to question or to doubt yeah. anything, right, was, was, was to not have faith. Yeah. And then with that, when you question your faith, you question your salvation. Mm. And then, so there's this whole existential crisis that happens that you spiral, you know, am I even going to go to heaven? And because I doubt. And so, yeah, there's people who, and, and, and unfortunately a lot of them are hurt by the church and they leave 
the faith, right? yeah. and then they do overcorrect everything. Yeah. Um, anything that even remotely t- feels like yeah. what they experience, they just want to run away from it and they want to change it. Yeah. Um, so now it's, it, they went from never being able to question to, uh, anything to now uh, overcorrecting, and now you can't question any of that. <laughs> it's terrible. You know what I mean? It really is. Yeah. Um, so wow. Yeah. And that's like the same kind of conditioning. It's just, yeah, we, we've like changed the the wording, but it's, oh, yeah. it, it, it's like the same type of religion of this. Yeah, you can't question this, and this yeah. is how we are to live. You if know? you want to be a good person. So now yeah, it's not a matter of exactly. questioning your faith. Now it's a matter, are you a good person? Yeah. You know, if you even if you even hesitate to ask, should we be doing this, or sh- or do I agree with this? Mm. You know, that's why it's rare. That's why you and I have become friends, I think, to begin with, is that we can talk about things like politics, mental illness, mm. uh, you know, just social changes, and we can literally be like, wow, that's a really interesting perspective. Not that we would agree with on, on everything, but just very... The fact that we can have those conversations. Yeah, and nuance. Sh- yeah, and share our questions. Yeah, nuance indeed. Yeah, yes. that there's a middle road. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, I... I. It's going to be hard to stay on the church hurt, hurt topic because <laughs> we could totally go off in a million directions, but that's all Dang. right. Dang. Was it, is that what I was about to do? Maybe. I don't know. You can. Feel free. I'm not... This is your show. This is real talk. It is real talk. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, because like... So I fancy you uh, uh, very theologically sound individual uh it seems as though wow. because and, and it's because you you know you put the time in to learn you know and and and, and you do question things and i think that's part of Did that you? reason and it's just it's so frustrating for me um now that i'm like in a, in a place where i do that too you mm-hmm. know where so many people who do subscribe to uh, religion and the christian faith uh, just take so much stuff at face value. Uh, and like knowing now, like and having a better understanding of like how the Bible was written, sure, who wrote it, what the intentions were and everything like that. I'm like, man, like you guys are missing so much just sure. because you're choosing to take it at face value. And if you actually dig into, and, and the same for those who, have yeah. like walked away it's like man it, but if you, oh, but yeah. you're missing so much the amount of people i know who who aren't religious who are like oh i read through the bible like oh yeah i get it like no you, you don't, don't. <laughs> you don't yeah. you don't like yeah. yeah exactly and so it that, that that just to me is another frustrating thing um which i think yeah i mean when was the last time you think in history that there's been room for nuance when looking at oh, the Bible. <laughs> well, probably never. I mean, I would like to think the Reformation, right? Mm. Like, that's why Protestantism exists, is because we're True. like, hey, we don't want the Catholic Church to have the yeah. whole say. You know, we want the people to be able to interpret the Scripture, but, like, there was still only, no, this is how you interpret it, right? Yeah. You know, so never. I don't mm. think ever. Yeah. What do you think? I don't know. I, I, I was. It was a genuine question. Oh, okay. I, yeah, do, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it was hypothetical or not. No. Uh, I, I'm like, I, I'm not a historian. That's for sure. Mm. But, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. So what about you? What about you're in, you're doing youth ministry now, right? Yes. How do you how do you feel like you know you you grew up in the church, right? I did. All right. So and you probably experienced some church hurt. Of course. <laughs> it's the only way to go, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, how how do you see that? As shaping the way that you do ministry, yeah, uh, with teens, yeah, it it may, it force it doesn't force me. Um, God has allowed me to really see Him in a way that I don't think people have allowed themselves to see Him mm-hmm. in a long time, you know in a real way, in a way that's more than just outward appearance. Right. More than just like, you found your Sunday best and I'm smiling because I'm happy and Jesus, so I will never have any trials or anything. Um, Live your best life now. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) literally. Yeah, yeah, that just that whole thing, God was just like, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. Good, Um, yeah. And that just happened early and I mean so much of that is because of just people who have poured into my life but also just yeah experiences that I've had 
honestly, my, my whole reason for being a Christian, I think a lot of that is rooted in it. Like, I always struggled early on, like before I really got serious, because I, I struggled to find the realness in it. You know, like I always had questions, just not not even just about like theology, but just like look at the way like life is for other people, not right, in sure. America. Like, yeah, yeah. and and maybe that's part of it. Like, my so my family's not from here, right. um, Jamaican, and like my parents were raised in a essentially like a third world country until sure. like maybe 50 years ago. Um, and so, yeah, just having that perspective from an early age, I've, I always just, it's always been at the back of my mind. Like, yeah, things are a certain way for certain people, but Mm -hmm. what if it doesn't like, what if it doesn't apply cleanly to others? And so, yeah. Um, anyways, Hmm. to try and (laughs) answer your question, um, it's just, yeah, it's just informed the way that I act. I, I am very adamant about being myself. I, I very much believe that mm. I have achieved what I have achieved because I've been myself. And that means all parts of me, not just the parts that I like, right? the parts that I hate, the parts that you know, are, are like my biggest enemy, you know, like I, I often say this, like my, my greatest ally is also my worst enemy and that's my mind, you know? Um, and so just allowing myself to be real and be all of those things and allowing people to see that, um, that's and just, all. Yeah. yeah, like that is, that's a good word, how I operate. And I, and I, I can't not do that. Yeah. You know, to a fault sometimes I'm sure. Yeah. Cause I'm, I love that. And that's, I'm, I'm very similar, mm. you know, and I played the church game as I, as, mm. as I call it, you know, um, give a shout out to my wife, watched her play the church game. You know what I mean? And, and it's nobody's fault. It's just what you, you see around you. Right. And it becomes an implicit, mm. I don't know if you, I want to say competition. Right. But like I, the outward, like you said, the outward Sunday best kind of thing. Like you've got to play the part and be the best at playing the part. Yeah. Um, and I came in and I tried it, right? Mm. Like I started attending church and everything felt like I had to act a certain way. And, and nobody pushed that on me, by the way. And that's, that's the part of church mm. that I think a lot of people don't talk about is that, you know, it's very easy to blame a church or the church and things like that. And it's like, but a lot of it was, that's, that's not explicit. Mm. Nobody, nobody forced that on you. Nobody's preaching that from the pulpit or anything like that. It's just culture, right? Like, yeah. and, and it's, and that's not just church culture. That's culture in ever. That's like true. you could keep it up with the Joneses, right? Yeah. Like I, I don't, I don't, I've never been one to necessarily care what people think about my dress, like how I dress and anything yeah. like that. But I know that people do. Yeah. Right. And, um, yeah, I, mm. I, I very much can appreciate the idea of just being me. And that it does. The hardest part is, is, is you're right. But, and I'm sure you know, this part is that the Holy spirit wants to also change those rough yeah. parts in you, you know? Yeah. So it's not, you've got people who I'm going to be me, I'm me, you know yeah. what I mean? And people yeah. have to deal with it. That's yeah. not a Christian view, no. right? right? That's a worldview to say, I'm going to be me and you have to suck it up. You have to put up with yeah. it. You got to change if it's hurting you. The hard part when you're a Christian is to say, these are the worst parts of me that I'm not going to try to hide away, but I'm going to bring them into community with other people so, so they can call me out on it and help me change it. And I think now more than ever, like it's so clear that that's how it's changed when you bring it forward. You yeah. Know, and when you bring stuff into the light, so yeah. to say, like that, that is how you change. And yes, I, I think painful. Yeah. Super uncomfortable. Yeah. Absolutely. And there, and there is like, there's the mindset that you have to have, like of of surrender is what it is, you know? Yeah. It's like almost all those worship songs that we listened, that you used to probably listen to as a kid and as a teenager, actually you were onto something. Hmm. Yeah. Are you telling me (laughs) (laughs) that we didn't just sing those? Um, but yeah, sorry. Uh, Surrender. Yeah. 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 Um, what was I about to say? So in youth ministry, Unless you want to try to no. find that thought. I was going to try to help. It's fine. It's but gone. In youth ministry, you're with these teenagers, some who may have grown up in the church, but 
probably a bunch of people who are inviting friends that they have no idea, right? You're experiencing this now, right? Yep. Younger generation didn't grow up in the church. They have no idea what the Bible says. They know nothing. Mm-hmm. We're living in a time right now yep. where you can't just assume that people know who Jesus is, mm-hmm. which is so fun. Yeah. Right? It's weird, but it's so fun. Um, how are you making sure that you're not falling into the pitfalls that of the things that hurt you? I want to know. Uh, when you have a one-on-one with a teen or, or like when it's a group and you guys are having a discussion, how are you careful to not say, this is what you have to think or this is what you have to believe and leaving it more open? I don't know that I've really formulated that until, you know, right now, but it's kind of the way you said it earlier, like the way that nobody really forces that on you, like nobody's really preaching that from the pulpit. That's culture and that's very much true and so I think anything that I can do with my teens to question the culture that has already shaped them Mm. I think is is playing into just like I'm all about and I I probably say this to my teens a million times like unlearn these things that and I feel like Yoda yeah unlearn what you have learned well yeah literally like it's very important yeah just because I mean Right now, primarily my group is middle schoolers, which is the just... The worst. I mean, just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's a crazy time. Like, I, I can remember fondly my days in middle school. and I Fondly, s- huh? Yeah. And I, I still say to this day, like, I had crazier, more life-shaping experiences in middle school than any other schooling. God bless you. Yeah. It was Those were my bullied years. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's a mix no, of it for me. They were good, yeah. But. <laughs> there, was, it, there was just a mixture. Like, sure. I don't know. It was just craziness. Where'd now. you go to school? Uh, South Mountain Middle School. It's in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And then where'd you go to high school? William Allen. William Allen, okay. Yeah, both very, um, I guess, urban I went to Nichman Middle School and then Liberty for a little bit before I moved to Northampton. That was a change. Ooh, I can imagine. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) ooh. Yeah. But yeah, so, yeah, sorry. Middle school is formative for you. Yeah. And so, I mean, yeah, getting back to my kids. So you want to pour that into your kids. kids. Yeah, Yeah, because I get how a lot of that can just seem very real. And it is real, you know, like... (laughs) it's just a lot of the challenges and stuff that they face. But like, I, I find myself, I guess, asking them questions that I would have liked to ask myself when I was that age cool. and be like, does this really matter? Like, wait, let's take a step back. Like if, if you're into this God thing, right. Which at this point I hope some of them are. And if you're able to see at least a little bit that maybe there's more to life than anyone is letting on then what really matters, you know? And how are we taking care of ourselves in a way that will point to something better, you know? I think Mm. just in general, people want to create a better life for themselves. And so adding to that God, you know, (laughs) which I obviously, the reason I believe that we exist the reason we function um and trying to get them to see that i mean saying it so plainly it's not going to make a difference now but like yeah working through the details working through the little things that people put their value in and just being like okay but what is this thing that society says what does it actually say about you who are who are you actually and if you don't know how can we start to figure it out? You know, hmm. I mean, I've been a big advocate for mental health, not for a long time, I, I, I'll admit, but like long enough now that it does inform just the way that I talk to anyone, I think. Yeah. Um, so especially the kids, like I encourage, like, yeah, talk about what you're going through. Stop deflecting because, oh, man, middle oh, schoolers yeah. can deflect like crazy. For sure. And that's just never, that's not going to get better you know people just f- get better at deflecting yeah to the point where they don't even realize they're doing it yeah you're kind of a cut through the bs kind of guy at this yeah. point right like yep. when it comes to like mental health and stuff like yeah. just stop pretending here like, yeah. let's get real yeah let's get real talk oh my gosh i get the box whoa, whoa. <laughs> let me tell you so many podcasts called real talk i feel like a, a <laughs> schmuck 
You could call it Talk Real. <laughs> or you could start making it a video podcast, like, officially, and then it'd be Real Talk, R-E-L. That's very 90s. Um, it is really 90s. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, hey, I respect it. Well, no, Reels are back, though. <laughs> With uh, Instagram. What, what do they call that? Is that the tickety talk? Uh, <laughs> I am not on the it. I am not on like any social media. Sorry, yeah. but you have to be because you're a youth pastor. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure I do. No, I I, I love that you're kind of like a cut through the BS kind of guy. That you, and I think that's how church hurt can form us positively. Is to not, you know, we we become very. You probably are. You become very aware and conscious of moments or times when people are trying to just sell a product that nobody wants, right? Hmm. Uh, or turn yeah. Jesus, uh, turn church into a product. Yes. You know, and so you, you're like, this isn't, why are we doing this? You know, just the questioning of like, why do we do what we do on a Sunday morning? Why do we do what we do? Is like the most important question. Mm. And that's what you're, I, that's what I hear what you're talking about your middle school. It's just like, why? Why mm. do you exist? Why do you like what you like or do what you do? Why is your friend group the way that it is? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and if it's, and if God, I love that question. If God, then what? Mm. Right. If God is real, then how should this be different? But also if not, right. Then still, what the heck are you doing? That's, like, that's fair. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Just getting them to challenge the way that their mind is being engineered because that's what's happening. I mean, social engineering now I think more than yeah, ever is it's just terrifying. crazy. It's terrifying. Yeah. yeah. My kid, my oldest is six, and I'm literally like, dude, oh my gosh, just seeing how ads were. I mean, speaking of reels oh, and things like that, I'm just, it's wild. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Mm-hmm. They're targeting, I was just having this conversation with, with my wife about how I can't w- go on any social media without getting forced to try to download TikTok. I, I refuse. <laughs> I absolutely refuse because I know that I'd become a zombie. Like, I would just like, yeah. Um, yeah. and, 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 but like every targeted ad on every platform is trying to get me to download this because they know that I'm 30 years old mm. and that 30 year old, that's what they're, they're this close to getting all of them, you know? That's and I'm like, funny. I won't do it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Interesting. Um, I have it. I don't use it. Yeah. And that's what I've talked to a lot of people. Same, very similar. I get the most notifications from them, which is hilarious. Dude, it's terrible. I yeah. downloaded it two once and I, and I, and I would, my phone was blowing up with yeah. notifications. You're missing out if you're not yeah. seeing this. And I was like, what is <laughs> happening? I'm like, I don't even, ha- I'm not even logged in right now. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. No, yeah. It, it's pretty brutal. Yeah, it is. And that's, yeah, that's the next Oh, it's here. Generation. It's not next. It's right, present, right. from what I understand. Right, right. Yeah, you know more. So you you just des- you decided to go and get involved in youth ministry. I took a job, and they said, "Well, would you want to work with youth?" And I said, "Absolutely not." That's funny. I literally was like, "I do not want to be a youth pastor." Really? Yeah, I think because of what we're talking about, that I'm I don't. I'm scared. Like I'm scared that it would be too easy to show up and play the game, you know, have hmm. a party pizza party and dodgeball and ramp up music and whatever and and give them uh an experiential whatever so that they're like oh church is so much fun i i love jesus Mm. and and i'm the guy who's like i I just want to sit and have a conversation with with teenagers about like what's going on with your life like where are you at like that's that's what i want to do with anybody you know what i mean like that's how i believe ministry happens and teens don't always need that teens sometimes do need to just break away and be kids be teens you know in a safe place that you know drugs alcohol things aren't going to be involved and and so that that is valuable and i know that needs Mm. to happen i'm not that guy Mm. you're Uh, not that guy i'm I'm not that guy (laughs) you know what i mean though like you're a dancer right like you could dance you can you can right you could get people like amped up you can give them a fun time but you're also that serious i think you're a great combination of what 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 Churches need in youth ministry personally. Hey, thanks. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks. And it's an avocado. <laughs> it's interesting that it's you say. It's interesting that. that you were saying you were talking about uh, the experiential youth group. Which, yes, I one million percent agree with you. It has to be that, but also the relational. And sometimes um, you, you choose one in favor of the other. I will say though. At least my peers, um, 
and some of like my mentors, there is more of a focus going back to both. Good. I think, and I mean, man, if I can just brag on my one friend real quick, Eric Hurst. Yeah, yeah. He is still, I think, the most perfect embodiment I've seen of that, of just constantly the most fun guy in the room. But so much of that was because he was also the realest guy in the room. Yeah. I barely, I, I know Eric very limited, but what I do know is that I, I think that's a valid, just shout out to Eric. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a valid, uh, yeah, synopsis. And, and seeing, I mean, as a teenager, how drawn people were to him, including myself. I was no stranger to that. Like mm -hmm. he, he wasn't my youth pastor, but like we would literally drive an hour to go hang out with him for sure. a day because he was the man, like literally just doing whatever the most um, mundane of activities was just fun because of who he was. And seeing that, and I think wanting to know, like how, like how does he do it? Because he's not, like he's not doing a song and dance. Right, he right, doesn't right. have a fancy sign. Most of the time he was like pinching pennies to put stuff together for, for sure. teens. But energy the masses yeah it was it, exactly and joy yeah it's like oh wow you actually enjoy what you do yeah. and, and you're not in it for the security of finances or, exactly. or whatever but you actually enjoy what you do you you know it you yeah see, and we were having this conversation before we even started this <laughs> that's what i appreciate about appreciate about you is that like you enjoy what you do you mm. know and that's it makes all the difference yeah man yeah i just i i'm convinced Especially just things that have happened this past year where I've not firsthand experienced church hurt, but seen so many of my good friends and peers experience it. Um, where, like, I don't, I don't think God is, you know, walking away from youth ministry. I just think, like, it's morphing in a way that of most of us just haven't caught up with. Yeah. And, yeah, it's this idea of, like, there's a time and place for the experience, but right now mm -hmm. we need to be more relational Yeah, because kids are being bombarded with so much. Like, yeah, we can give somebody a fun experience. Cool. But so can the world, you know, yeah. like that's not the goal here. It's one to give a space where they can actually be themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And two, yeah, just, being rela intentionally relational, teaching intentional relational relationship. Yeah. Like, at least that's just what I'm seeing. And sometimes it's not going to fit the mold of what a church might want. No, it's not. It's not. And so many people are, like, baffled. Like, what's happening to youth ministry? Why are so many youth pastors calling it quits? Like, what's happening? It's like, because they're realizing something that, I think you know, but you just can't accept. Because you'd have to change. Yeah. Which is which none of us like. Right. Yeah. But the, I like I just think that's what's happening, you know. Oh yeah, there's a wave hitting. Mm. There's a wave hitting with you know Gen Z and younger generations of like. Uh, there's one podcast that talks about uh, you know because obviously I feel like a shout out needs to happen. You know the Mars Hill podcast. Yes. Like when we talk about church hurt, you know that's the greatest example. And I think it's a shame if anybody would not listen to that with open ears and an yeah. open heart. Um, there's some people who believe that that's like a hit piece. Sorry, the rise and fall of Mars Hill yes. as a podcast. But so good. Um, you know people think it's a hit piece, and I don't see it as that. I see it as as a beautiful just. Um, full of grace like nobody's trying to say condemn anybody just try to walk through genuine church hurt with a real time um you know experience right like this this is a real moment in history that happened with a ton of people involved and hearing how these people dealt with it and, and it are still dealing they're still it. dealing with it yeah. and but still finding jesus in it yeah right like that is if if it didn't have that and i tell people that all the time if it doesn't have that if you get to hear somebody and they start talking, if there's ever a podcast, like even if this podcast, right? If in this episode we started talking about a church mm. as a way of like those people, right? Like, mm. oh, that th those people are hurting people. And it's like, no, what's important about Mars Hill is that it's every church mm. of every size of every culture has the potential mm -hmm. to hurt people. Mm -hmm. And they're not just 
hurting people like any other institution hurts someone. Like, you know, we'll do an episode on school hurt, like you said, right? Like, <laughs> you're hurting people in the name of Jesus. Exactly. And that's just a whole different kind of trauma. Like we talked about the faith. When you get somebody questioning their faith, you're questioning their salvation. You're questioning their afterlife. You're questioning their entire purpose for being and for mm. waking up and for continuing. Like, that is... That's that's really really hurtful, and that's why church hurt is is such an cool. important topic to talk about. But yeah, um, yeah Mars Hill, uh, and there's another podcast that I recommend to people all the time. It's heavy. It's very theologically heavy, um, but it's called In the Shift. Yeah, yeah. Did you get to listen to any of that? I listened uh, yeah. to the Hell one. Oh, it's good, right? Yeah, it'll it'll Ooh. it'll it'll shake you up for Rattled. sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. My favorite thing about him though is that he he will not tell you this is how you believe. This is what you have to believe about hell. This is what you have to believe about what it, the Bible, you know, what the Bible is, inerrancy and things like that. Yeah. He, he lays out all these different traditions and says, none of these are attached to your salvation. Mm. You can believe what you want about this, and, and it has nothing to do with the character of Jesus and what Jesus did, you know, the cross and resurrection. Your faith, your salvation can still stand exactly as it is, but guess what? You don't have to believe certain things about hell. And you don't have to believe certain <laughs> things about like, you know, just a multitude of, of, of like purity culture. He tears apart purity culture of like what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, what, you know, and the, that kind of stuff, uh, toxic masculinity, misogyny. And, and it's, it just tears all this apart of what it means to be a Christian man and Christian woman. And they're like, that's those are cultural things. Mm. That is not biblical right mm. like but if i mean if you want to believe that and participate in that that's fine but what we see is that it hurt people it hurts people um that was a really long rant but wow. in the shift yeah. i'm sorry about that no but in the shift is huge and the whole premise of the name is that it's in the shift we're shifting in christian times right now there's a huge change of people like you and me mm. who have been hurt or they're just questioning life and they don't know how to get from point a how they grew up what they believe what they were taught to, to where they want to be, which is they love Jesus yeah. and they still do. And they believe in Jesus, but all of this extra baggage, they don't want to carry with them. Yeah. You know, and, wow. uh, that's, that's hard, but I've seen it in real time, by the way. And I'm sure yeah. you have too. people yes, who sir. are experiencing this and coming out of it. Yes, sir. I've witnessed it in real time. And it's the most beautiful thing in the world hmm. is for people who are able to come out onto the other side and let that baggage go. It's, it's glorious. I I don't know that I can say I've seen enough of that. It's it's not enough. <laughs> or really, I I'm, I'm. Any at all? Some in some ways, and some of it is ongoing, and oh, so we'll see is. where it goes. You know, it is ongoing. But yeah, I can't I can't think of one like I was here and then uh, now I'm here. You know, yeah. like. It's just all here, and yep, they're kind of down here, still figuring stuff out, processing, yep. picking mm -hmm. up the pieces. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, that's our jobs, though. Like in ministry, we're, we're gonna we're gonna help those people, right? Right. Now it's not everybody's calling, right? It's definitely my calling. I think that if more than anything, God has called me to 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 get in the trenches with those people. Yeah. Because I I'm in those trenches still some days, right? Like it's ongoing. Like some days I'm just like, why am I doing what I'm doing? Oh yeah, because you know, and then yes. And that makes all the difference. Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah. Deconstruction. I think that's another thing, yeah. which is interesting. Um, like, so that's been on uh, our board in the youth room for as long as I've been there. In the youth just, room. Wow. Yeah, just the word deconstruction. Mm -hmm. And most of my, so like Christianity has just reached that part in our culture where like, yeah, even if you are actually unchurched mm -hmm. and you don't actually know the contents of the Bible, you still have a general idea. Yeah, that's good. That's important. Yeah. You still have a general idea of what it is. And so my goal is to, before they even get a chance to like have in their mind what church is, deconstructing what they may have thought it was. Yeah. And, and, and also, but also I think part of my wanting to do that um, is just from seeing the mass amount of kids who are raised in the church. So many of them are very passionate about Jesus. And yeah. then once 18 hits, literally, yeah. they're just like, wait. <laughs> and the, 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 the first question just leads to just 
Spiral. Spiral, unraveling. And, yeah. And, and just, yeah, reinforcement, overcorrection of just things that are not true, that aren't true um, because of one just little. And so, yeah, getting it into their minds now that, like, hey, it's okay to question. Yeah. Please, please ask That's questions. Huge. And here's why, like, yes, you're spot in the shift on. in the character of getting to the character of Jesus. Like, here's why the stuff that is weighing heavy on you, it doesn't have to. Right. Yeah. 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 That's it's it's good. Wow. That's a huge. It's a hard work. Hard work that you <laughs> that, that you know people got to do. Tell you what. Yeah. But it's absolutely. huge. I mean, I am curious to ask, and I mean, uh, is much detail as you feel comfortable sharing like your own experience with church or like what was that like for you yeah i i have to be careful with what i say only because i i have to be i'm very mindful of the fact that church church hurt um is different when you're a pastor than you are as a lay Hmm. member too and that's what's so that's what's so tough is that it's hard being a pastor trying to help people through church hurt, and a lot of their church hurt comes from their pastor. <laughs> um, but I was hurt as a pastor, and I think it's why it gives me a, a kind of a weird place, a special place to be able to speak into that. Is that, mm. um, and I'm careful. I say I want to be careful to talk about it, is because I, I had a part in it, and I want to make sure that I, I I'm speaking correctly and, and acknowledging mm. my own part and how I did not act as a Christian should act. Um, but. Yeah, we it was in 2016, uh, which was you know election time, and uh, the best time. The best. It was the worst of times. It was the worst of times. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know 2016. I, I'm apolitical. Like I just, I always have been. Like I knew what my parents, I knew what my dad was like voting wise growing up, but I just never cared. I was mm. never interested, and I know. You're supposed to be interested. You're, you know, if you want to be a well-rounded adult and be able to go out and what does that even mean? Yeah, I know, right? So I'm like, you know, I, I just never had any any interest. Like, I, not that I, I stick my head in the sand, but mm-hmm. just that, like, I don't know. I'm always like, my life has to go on. The next day, I, I put on my, I get dressed, I put the on my sun shoes, will rise. I, yeah, and I gotta go to work, and I got mm-hmm. a family to take care of, and things like that. My life will never revolve around this. Hmm. It can't <laughs> because it, it there's not it's not valuable anyway. <laughs> that's a side rant. But in 2016, uh, you know, just things got so heated with the election, you know, and and I get it. People are passionate about things, hmm. um, and I, what I saw at the church that I was at at that time, and, but it wasn't just my church. It was just in the world. Yeah, that one way or another, um, Christians, you know, believing that like Trump was like going to save whatever they saw as the problem in the world or in their country or in their personal community, that Trump was going to be the solution. And then other people would believe that whatever they're experiencing as the big issue, the big thing that needs to get fixed, Hillary Clinton is going to be the same. And it's very savior language. Mm. Like if not this person, then we're doomed. Mm. And I'm like, whoa, if you're Christian, you're just totally wrong. Like, I, I, I mean, like you're, you're wrong in putting your hope. Yeah. In, in in a person like that. It's just so weird. Now, I didn't grow up in the church. I'd, I had no idea growing... I had no idea, really, that like politics and church played such a big part. In fact, mm. I thought it was the opposite, right? You grow up not going to church, but going to public school, learning about separation of church yeah. and state, right? Yeah, yeah. And so you just kind of imagine that that's how it works, that mm. there's separation of church and state. And then you get involved in... Ch- and, and when I got saved, and I, you know, I started attending church, politics were never mentioned. Mm. As far as I remember, you know what I mean? Like, it was not a thing. So all of a sudden, you know, people are, like, at Bible study wanting to talk about politics and the election. And, and, and people are handing out flyers and pamphlets about, like, why not to vote for this person, who to vote for this person. I'm like, this is all very strange to me. And then Facebook. <laughs> you know, right? Like, you know. Uh, like, mm. literally just constantly demonizing people yeah. one side's demonizing the other and i'm like do y'all know that you stand next to each other and worship on a sunday mm. and it was very i was in a very dark place now mind you this is 2016 uh getting towards election season so end of summer right maybe september my son was born in april of 2016 so our first child 
My wife was working a full-time job. I was going to school while doing youth ministry and assistant ministry at a church. Yeah, it was a lot. And, and my dad died in August. Mm. In August. Uh, totally unexpected. He was very young. We were the only people out of town. I didn't get to make it there in time. It was a very traumatizing mm. uh, summer. A couple of months, right, where... You know, they say, I don't know if you know about the list of like the big life changes Mm -hmm. that add the most stress to somebody. And it's like, you know, death of a parent, child, moving, birth of a child, uh, you know, job change, all that kind of stuff. And we got hit with like four of them all at once. Mm. And and I got and and when you when you have those moments with a new child and and losing a loved one and you start to realize what's important. Right. Mm. And I found that I was getting so overworked by politics, right? Because I was attending college at the time. And so there were constant discussions amongst my peers. And um, and I was getting so overheated by it, um, all the hate that people were spewing. And, and I finally started to, like, get involved in Facebook debates and conversations. Because I like debating. I like talking about things with, with reasonable human beings. But I, I quickly devolved into not caring how I was presenting myself and, mm. and presenting those, those thoughts and stuff like that. And I shared something on Facebook. Some people in my church did not like, um, and yeah, I, I don't, I won't be careful about what I say, but the result was we left that church because we weren't right for that church mm. during that season. I mean, that's really how I, I view it now. However, um, how it was handled, I think from my church's standpoint and from myself, I don't think was healthy and I don't think was good. And what it did was it left me and my wife and my newborn child kind of questioning the place of church in the world. Mm -hmm. Because if this is where, if this is what every church is, where they care so much about politics, I don't want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. God, I hope that nothing in this podcast comes back to bite me. No. Um, But, Yeah, I still have PTSD to this day. Hmm. Like, I have a conversation or interaction with somebody in my church, someone I love, someone I am good friends with, and and I'll be scared. Like, I'll I'll freak out because of something they'll mention about politics or whatever, and I'm like, oh my gosh, just don't don't engage, don't engage, don't Hmm. engage. Even though I have such a more meaningful relationship, and I could totally engage with this person, but that's how our last church was, is that it was a beautiful church with a beautiful community. And I love my pastor. I still, to this day, will tell every person I meet, I've, I'll never learn more about what it means to be a shepherd hmm. than, than from working with that man. He was 67, 68 years old at that time. You know, and he, he'll, somebody needs him to milk cows. He's going out and milking cows oh. for him on their dairy farm. You know, need him to cut wood. He's cutting wood for his people and, and it, would never question it. And he was a hard wow. worker and he loved people. So I learned so much about what it means to just serve. Um, but that's what makes it hard. Hmm. And that's what makes church hurt so hard. It's because it comes from people who you never expect it from. That's what makes it so hard. You know? I concur. People you trust. Yeah. People who who helped you grow in some of your worst parts, right? And then all of a sudden, something that is a line in the sand that, no, you can't do that. Right? And, and you hear this story. You hear this from, from women, right? Yeah. That, like... They'll, they'll serve in their church. They'll grow up their church. They'll do amazing things and, and they'll, they'll, yeah. And, and all of a sudden they'll like wear a shirt that's too low cut and they'll never be allowed to sing on the worship team again, or they'll never be able to serve in youth ministry. And it's like, what, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like, the, that's someone you tr- like, these are people you trust. These are your leaders. These are your friends. These are your family, really, if you're at a good church and only something like that, it just hurts way more. Yeah. You know, but. I will say it helped me. It's uh, if I wouldn't have gone through what we went through. And again, I've obviously being very careful not to share too many details about that. But what I have learned is that man, Jesus suffered. Yeah. And he was right the entire time. And, and that was a big game changer for me was that Jesus went to the cross was killed and he was right the entire time. He knew he was right. <laughs> it, it, it's an objective thing. It's not a subjective like, oh, you may be right. Mm. You know what I mean? Like the, the yeah, okay. Oh, you, you may be right about that just to kind of like mm. placate a person. Yeah. This was, Jesus was objectively correct and he objectively did nothing wrong whatsoever. 
but he was killed. And if Jesus can do that, and you're called to follow Jesus, there's going to be times in your life that you could, right? Up in heaven, God's like, yep, JJ is right. He's objectively right. He is the one that is standing in total truth in this matter. Or Bernard is the same way. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. And and you're just going to suffer. And 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 you're and Jesus did that too. And you are going to be more like Jesus by just accepting what comes out of this and not allowing it to make you hurt people. Yeah. Now wow. com- coming out of that situation, I hurt people. Hmm. Because I was mad. I was angry. I was messed up, right? Hmm. So like whether it was intentional or unintentional, I am sure that I hurt people and I didn't care at all on the way out. Now, I'll never allow that to happen again. Hmm. By the by, the grace of God, I'll never allow that to happen again. I, I will never, I mean, I, I lay awake in bed at night if I had, if I feel like I, I wronged somebody or said something wrong and I, I need to reach out to them and contact them and call them and things like that because I, that's not the Christian life. The Christian life repairs those things, reconciles those things. That's the ministry that we've been given by the grace of God is to reconcile people. So really painful, but when you can work through it and heal through it, 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 it'll, your faith will become all the richer. And that's what deconstruction is all about, right? That's what healing from church hurts. And that's where you are right now. Yeah. You've been hurt, but you're not living in that. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I work in it. The fact, the fact, I'm working the, in it. The fact that I work in a church is such a testament of what God has done in my life. Yeah, like, yeah, it's it's insane. It's insane to think <laughs> that I'm I'm closing in on a year yeah. at the church that I walked away from. Praise God, you know. And I feel like things are moving, and and I feel so much more enriched and. Yeah, like I, yeah, you, it, it, exactly. You have to go through these things, but I think you do it so you can, it, because it points to Jesus. It Absolutely. points to the life that he lived. And yeah. You probably did not see any of that happen at the time. You're probably like, this is horrible. I don't deserve this. No one deserves this. This is wrong. I will say it was easier because of stories like yours, you know, mm. because. I know, I know I wasn't in it alone, yeah. and I think it was growing. Yeah, I mean, my story's not like yours, and it's not as like heavily detailed. Um, I just, really, I just felt like so there were some convictions, similar sure. problems, you know, just with like politics and whatnot, where I just didn't feel like I needed to be in that space anymore, you know? Yeah. And it was hard, because it was my home church. It was where I... Yeah was me you know yeah yeah and and so um yeah but again yeah i don't know god it it was just very amazing timing as well because that's what god i mean in my life it's just like timing timing is insane and yeah just the people who were around me at that point that i really cared about were going through such similar things that i couldn't be too upset about it Mm. i was upset and i still am in some ways but like i couldn't be so distraught um because i just realized like no it's time to level up here you know time to level up yeah not for you know anyone else but for you for your growth you know Mm. so you can do what i have commanded you to do you know in in a way that's more effective yeah, this is what needs to happen. And so, yeah. you know, it was quicker than I thought sure, <laughs> that, I'm, yeah. that I'm, like, in this oh, world. I'm so happy you are, you're where you're at, man. I think that's so cool. I mean, we had just, we had discussions about ministry oh, yeah. and stuff like that. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, for the fact that it's happened like this so quickly, like, mm. praise God. And, and I think you're exactly where you're supposed to be. You know, and I think you know that, but here that's an extra affirmation for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very interesting. Um life lived when you yeah i i think the the uh the experience of those raised in the church um can be underrated at times like it's everybody loves a great like come to jesus story or oh, like, yeah, no. oh yeah i was those are my least favorite strung stories. out on crack cocaine <laughs> and meth at the same time and yeah like 
amazing stories, but there's just so much more of people who didn't have a incredibly traumatic like oh yeah life um but it was like it wasn't a big trauma but it was like consistent trauma yeah, yeah, yeah. you know um what was that word that you used at the beginning i'm just i can't even remember uh train like not training. conditioning conditioning yeah, yeah. that's deep, what it was deep conditioning Much more than that yeah 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 you still see that man what would you say to the people the people out there who um, may be experiencing it right now. Hmm. Christian or non-Christian? Um, ooh. I would approach that differently, but that's... Dang, now I kind of want to hear both. <laughs> Fine. I could do that. Non-Christian. Non-Christian. I would say don't... D- part of me would say don't settle for whatever church is closest to you or whatever. Um, settle for, for, for a church. Not Don't settle, but uh, find a church where you can be you. Like Bernard talked about, I'm going to be me, the bad and all. Find a place that accepts that but, but doesn't let you stay there, right? Loves you through it and wants you to grow. Mm-hmm. Um, is the one thing I would say. But the other thing I would say is just find a church that lets you ask questions. That is the number one thing. Mm-hmm. That is the church that, uh, a church that I'm at. It, I've had young adults who have literally, that's the one thing they've testified of why they started attending our church is that I could go to Bible study. I could meet with a pastor and I could just say, I don't understand. I don't think it was a fish that swallowed Jonah. <laughs> like, you know, I don't think that actually happened, you know, and, and, and me or my senior pastor would say, that's okay. Mm. Right. Like that's what the story says. Maybe like, sure. That's what happened. He got ate by, he got eaten by a fish. By the way, who wrote Jonah? No, don't, don't. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Right. Um, uh, just find your, fi- that's the biggest advice. Find a church if you're interested in faith. Right. And that's what I love. I love people when I say non-Christians, you know, uh, agnostic probably yeah you know if you're somebody who's looking for faith and and curious about the christian faith find a church that is going to be able to uh uh you're going to be able to ask questions but also be okay with uh the mystery of it all you know you're going to go to the church on sunday and and let yourself just sit in the awkwardness and the uncomfort of Mm. communion and prayer and altar calls if you can find a church that has an altar call that stuff is weird in the culture (laughs) we're living in right like, yeah. you know, you walk into it and, you know, yeah, a lot of it's going to be similar. You'll get like a, you know, music and then it'll feel like a concert. You've been to a concert before and you know how the seats are laid out. Yeah, you've been to a movie theater. You know how you know how everybody to sit. There's probably a coffee mm-hmm. stand. No, there's not popcorn, but get yourself a cup of coffee, whatever. There's stuff that you're going to know and feel familiar with. That stuff, just whatever. Do what you got to do. But if you're going to go to a church, don't be weirded out and say there's people are weird you know when it comes to communion and altar call and prayer just sit in that awkwardness because that's where god wants to meet you hmm. that'd be the that'd wow. be my big advice yeah i love that and then to the christian good luck <laughs> no we need you the church needs you don't leave we you know your hurt is going to help somebody um but if you're in a place where you're you're being traumatized, get out safely, you know, um, it's okay to take a break. It's okay to not be serving every single Sunday and every Wednesday night or whenever your Bible study is, it's, it's okay. Mm. You know, uh, that's the, my big thing now is as I work with different ministry teams and stuff, it's like, I know you love what you're doing, but you don't need to do it every week. You need to just sit in the congregation and just worship, right? Yeah. Every pastor needs it. Every person needs it. So take a break. Don't burn out. Yeah. And don't forget, this isn't my thing, but Jackie Hill Perry said it, and I love it. The the cure to church hurt is church. Um, oftentimes, and is and, church. Yeah. It's true. Yeah experiencing what the church was intended to be is yeah. the cure for the 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 country club scorn. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Wow. 
Yeah, it's real. But that's hard to sell to people. You know, it's yeah. hard it's hard to convince people that of the truth, right? That uh uh you know, the to heal church hurt, you got to go to church. I think yeah. We did good. We're an hour in. Oh, we're I safe think. to wrap it up. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you. Oh, absolutely. This thank you. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. I will definitely have to do this again. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, next time we just you won't have any video or whatever, but you can always call me and we could do it on you know. Dude, I hate that. Yeah. I hate yeah, the person listening to podcast better. and it's the Zoom audio and it's just I agree. Blah, 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 blah. Like I want to I mean I do have like a full mic setup and video setup and everything like Oh, that. I'm so, sure it's doable. So it wouldn't yeah. be terrible. We can like we we'll get the exact same we'll get this exact same backdrop and it'll look like we'll <laughs> convince people and we'll just <laughs> half it. We'll convince people are in the same room. Come on, man. Dude. Yeah. I'm down. <laughs> no, it's okay. Well, I'll, I'll come back. It just gives me another reason. This was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. I'm cool. So, I'm sorry if well, I hurt anybody in the process. Hey, man. Maybe it needed to happen. Podcast hurt. Podcast. <laughs> Have you been hurt by a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> you may be entitled to compensation. <laughs> the Rise and Fall of Mars Hill Podcast Podcast. Where we talk about how that podcast hurt us. <laughs> how we've been traumatized by the rise and fall of Oh, I love that. Can you imagine? Uh, the rise and fall of the rise It would be so <laughs> the rise and fall of the rise and fall would be so satirical. It'd be oh wonderful. Gosh. We should do it. Dude, <laughs> yeah, uh, Reach out to Christianity today. Yeah. All right. Goodbye. Boom. <laughs>